an old friend returns to D.C. Everybody's friend Jen Hatfield is here to discuss it. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, hi there, everybody, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal, founder and editor of The Next. How do you follow all the amazing work we're doing? Ah, It's hard to imagine, but you can do it by following us on Twitter at Locked On Women's Basketball, Locked On WBB. You can subscribe. You've made us your first listen every day, and we are eternally grateful wherever you get podcasts. And you should subscribe to The Next, thenexthoops.com. We have over 100 reported pieces on women's basketball every single month. It's the women's basketball stories of your dreams. It's here. Come support the work. Follow us at the next hoops, subscribe at the next hoops.com. And you're going to get things like DC, Washington Mystics reporting, Ivy League reporting, just some of the overall brilliance from the great Jen Hatfield, who joins me. Jen, when you think about the Mystics season so far, how much of it has been basketball and how much of it has been vibes between old friends coming home and people who were injured returning to the regular lineup? That's a great question. There are definitely a lot of vibes. Um, I alone have covered Elena Deladon's healthy return, Alicia Clark's return, Emma Meesman's return. And I didn't even give Elizabeth Williams a story of her own for uh, she just joined the Mystics this year and made her debut after missing uh, five games because she was overseas. Like we could have had even more vibes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, there have been a lot of vibes, but um, I think Coach Tebow is is happy that it looks like the vibes may slow a little bit tonight. This is the first uh, game all season where they will have all 11 players on their roster healthy and available, um, barring any last minute changes. So uh, it looked I like think a typo. Settle down and get basketball. <laughs> it looked like a typo when I got the email from Mystics PR, and it was, you know, here's the injury report. No injuries to report. That, no, how could that possibly be? I'm delighted, obviously, pleased to see it because that group deserves some good injury luck. It's been a minute since that happened, but just seeing that, and again, let us be clear, we are very much here for the Elizabeth Williams vibes, and there'll be plenty of that coverage as well, but. I do want to talk about the return of an old friend and your story. People should go read it over at the next hoops.com right now. It is sights and sounds. It's something Jen, you do as well as anybody I've ever seen. You bring people inside what it felt like. So take me there, take our audience there. Emma Meesman signing with the Chicago sky, a longtime member of the Washington mystics up to and including the MVP of the finals when the Mystics finally broke through and won. What was it like in that arena? Yeah, so I think the first thing that's important to understand is that the Mystics have welcomed back several former players over the past year plus. Christy Tolliver came through, which I wrote about, and that was really fun. Um, Ariel Powers came through. You know, folks from their uh, 2019 championship team, six of them are are on the roster right now, um, but others have come through over the years. And With absolutely no disrespect to any of them, least of all Christy Tolliver, who is uh, phenomenal. Um, Emma Meesman, like I I wrote in a story in February when she played in D.C. with the Belgian national team. uh, The entertainment and sports arena where the Mystics currently play is the house that Emma Meesman built. She is the Mystics franchise um, over the past decade. So. They didn't just welcome back any old friend or any legend. They welcomed back the franchise's career leader in win shares, uh, career leader in blocks, and someone who's top six in pretty much every other category. You know, it's easy to think of Elena Deladon as central to this Mystics project. And I think it's fair to say, you know, given the impact that she's had and she was the MVP of the 2019 season, she is the leader in some fundamental ways. But look, I remember talking to Mike Tebow back in the times that D.C. would come into Madison Square Garden. 
not Westchester County Center or Barclays Center. And this was early on and a big part of the way in which he conceived of positionless basketball. And he was talking about ahead of, frankly, just about anyone else in the WNBA had to do with what Emma could do, the versatility of her game and the fact that it came down to less Emma developing into a better player and more Emma fully realizing what she was capable of being and doing. She was a 19 year old rookie in this league and has turned into an absolute star. And so having her back, which is itself a luxury, given her overseas commitments, given that it is not a given that Emma Meesman is part of the WNBA universe at all times is something I think basketball fans are grateful for. But it sounds to me, and obviously you had a lot of these details in the story, like her ex-teammates have an adoration for her that goes beyond just, hey, this is somebody who went through the wars together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I kind of didn't really get into your original question, so I'll kind of try to try to bundle them here. Um, but yes, um, I talked to Natasha Cloud uh, on the Mystics practice court uh, before the game, and I asked her, you know, what's something that you learned from Emma or just took away from your time together um, hmm. while you were teammates for, I believe they were teammates for four years off the top of my head. Um, and Natasha said her, her unselfishness, she will do whatever the team needs. And you see that in her play almost to a fault sometimes. Um, but that is something that really resonates with all of her teammates is she is just the opposite of the arrogant superstar. She's the superstar who um, really only seemed to realize how good she was in the 2019 finals when she took over and became the finals MVP. Um, so people just love playing with her. She's she's just an enjoyable person to be around. She has all sorts of hidden talents that her teammates saw in the bubble. Um, I think her her artistic skills were the ones that got the most buzz on social media, but she did a lot of painting and everyone was like, wow, this is, this is really good. Um, so she's just, you know, there's a lot more to her than basketball and she's also phenomenal on the basketball court. I covered that finals as I know you did too. And they don't win that game without Emma Meesman flat out. Now Connecticut sun team was firing on all cylinders. John Paul Jones discovered what has become since her new normal an MVP level. Uh, she was at 32 and 18 in one of the games earlier in the series. And they led in the third quarter when Emma Meesman turned that around. So it, it, it quite clearly, she finds what is necessary in order to win. Now she's moved to Chicago, but it doesn't sound like, there's any sort of bumps in the road. Uh, I, I know you had a chance to talk to James Wade about what it is meant to have Emma Meeseman on this Chicago Sky roster. And then take me through what that conversation was like. Yeah. So Kareem Copeland from the Washington Post started out uh, by telling James, you know, we'd love to talk to you about Emma. Uh, she she gets a lot of buzz here in D.C. or something. And, and he goes, really? She does? Um, which was just a great way to start the conversation. But James said that he had actually scouted Emma uh, when she was 19 years old playing in France, which is the year that the Mystics drafted her um, in the second round. Let's let's ah. remind everyone. Emma Meeseman was a second round draft pick, y'all. Um, but so James had scouted her too, and he quipped, I didn't make the decisions. So he, he really liked her even back then. He just did not get as lucky as Mike Tebow. And he has also coached her overseas in the past several years um, in Russia with uh, UMMC, which is a powerhouse if you know anything about the EuroLeague. And if you don't, you should read our coverage at the next because it's mm -hmm. great. Um, every week. Every week. Every week. Yeah. So she has played for James Wade, who is an assistant there, um, and played with Courtney Vandersloot and Allie Quigley, who are in Chicago. And so she felt comfortable making that jump. And from James's perspective, it's just been a super smooth transition. She's fit right in. Like I said before, she's super unselfish. So she's just, she's the perfect piece to blend in. Like she, she can blend in with any setting you put her in. So um, at least from James's perspective, it's been a pretty easy transition. Um, and uh, yeah, so this was her first game back in DC in the WNBA. She came, like I said earlier, with the national team. Um, in February and played against Team USA there. So a little bit of a preview of what was to come this weekend. 
Uh, I got a couple more things I want to talk about, including her legacy with the Mystics. But first, I want to pay some bills and talk to you about prize picks. Uh, prize picks is easy to use. You pick two to five players and an over under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. It's safe and offers fast withdrawals for money that you win. You can award the, use the award winning app in both the App Store and Google Play. Uh, there are mixed sports entries. It's not just NBA, they got college basketball, college football, NFL. MLB soccer, let them know you want women's sports as well. For a limited time, Prize Picks has an exclusive offer for all of our users. Users get $50 for free. And if a player in your first Prize Picks entry scores a single point, you win. But you must use the code NBA, which is, as I understand it, uh, the men's league uh, that corresponds to the WNBA. That's right. An exclusive offer available to locked on fans. Sign up today and use code NBA, $50 for free. That is prize picks. So Emma Meesman ultimately, and, and you use this quote in the headline, because of course you did. So that was perfect, right? You talked to Ariel Atkins, and this is this is the quote. Emma's a great player, but I miss Emma as a person more than anything. That's my friend, right? And then Heinz Allen was asked, how much on a scale of one to ten, or how much do you miss Maisha? She asked Emma Meesman. Meesman goes 12. Again, like the love for Emma Meesman was so overwhelming and poured through in that piece. Is her legacy just somebody who's, you know, the Liberty has a ring of honor? Is, is she one of those foundational people that we'll be talking about when it comes to the Mystics forever? Yeah, I think she's very much, if we're talking on the court, I think she's very much linked to Mike Tebow and the way that he was able to resurrect the franchise, I think is not too strong a way to put it. Um, he came in, he's, he's joked several times about how, um, you know, in the months before he ended up taking the Mystics job, when he was with Connecticut, who was doing very well, uh, had Tina Charles, um, yeah. among others, uh, he, you know, a couple times he would look at Washington and say, oh, those poor people in Washington, you know, either because they're losing or their arena's not full or because they had bad draft luck. Mm -hmm. And then a couple months later, he became that poor guy in Washington. Um, <laughs> so, you know, Emma was one, one of his first draft picks, and she really, I think, will be tied to him for her longevity in D.C. and how she was able to lift up others and, and move that, that franchise forward. Um, and Natasha Cloud, I actually... I actually asked her as well, how do you sum up Emma's legacy with the Mystics? And she said, yeah. I don't think you can sum it up um, because, you know, it's just it's it's just um, so overwhelming. But she pointed specifically to the 2019 championship team and uh, because that was the first championship in franchise history. And she said, our names will forever be in history on that team and having done that. So I think that that is a big um, part of her legacy as well. But off the court. You know, that legacy still, like I said, there are six players from that championship team still on this year's Mystics team. Mm -hmm. And as we saw on Sunday, most notably through Maisha Heinz Allen, who was Miesman's best friend um, in Washington, and they're still very close. Um, Emma's legacy still lives on through the players there, and especially the younger ones who um, looked up to Emma and you know, Emma was the first of that bunch to be in D.C. So, you know, even at Elena Deladon, when she came in, Emma had already been in D.C. for several years and was right. established there. And so, you know, Elena had to play alongside Emma and they had to figure that out. It wasn't like Emma was it wasn't like Elena was always the superstar and Emma just blended around her. Um, so I think that she just. You know, it, it was very obvious how much the Mystics love seeing her. You saw, I wrote about this in the story, how Tiana Hawkins um, had this, like, very adorable, like, side hug with her during warm-ups. All the Mystics staff members were giving her hugs. She was very excited to see Mike Tebow pregame. And then there was this adorable moment after the game that I, I wish I had a video clip of because it just, it was just so cute where uh, Emma is hugging Maisha Heinz Allen and Ariel Atkins comes over and gets a hug too. And then, and then Emma's kind of giving Maisha some advice and, 
and cupping her her uh, face in her hands, and it was just it was just very touching. So, uh, you know, if you if you looked hard enough, you saw the love there, um, even if it wasn't, um, you know, being proclaimed over the PA system or, or super obvious. Um, it was it was definitely there. It's a beautiful thing to see. And Emma, let's not forget, I was very much, to my mind, on a Hall of Fame track, potentially, with what she's been able to do. So that's going to be something that'll be fun to watch with her legacy as well, just in the broader basketball sense, especially if she can find uh, and help deliver a second championship this year in Chicago. It's going to be fascinating to see. And, you know, again, it's delightful to see Emma Meesman blossom the way that she has uh, because there's a long time in coming but i i do think and and, and i want to talk just very briefly uh, about that 2013 draft uh because you mentioned and i'm a shocker mike tebow did well in the draft right you know that's how it always how odd but you know he also drafted taylor hill he got some good years out of taylor hill in that draft with the fourth overall pick in what was a draft that was three to see and then he turned taylor hill into aerial powers. Like, I, you know, Mike Tebow, if I ever need to make life decisions, I wish I could hire Mike Tebow to do it for me. But I just let you neither here nor there. I, I do want to talk as well about another story that you had uh, that was a little bit different than what we're used to. Uh, and it's very clearly a an official bar partner of the Washington Mystics called As You Are. And it's not your typical sports bar experience. You went there during a Mystics road game. Um, take me through, if you could, just what was your most excited takeaway from that experience? Yeah, I, I honestly think it is the perhaps most obvious that there is a bar in D.C. that is showing every single Mystics game, uh, giving, you know, the Mystics the uh, men's sports treatment that you typically mm-hmm. see at sports bars. Um, so that As You Are is one of the Mystics' two official bar partners. Um, as You Are is in Southeast D.C. and the other one um, whose name I am forgetting, so I apologize to them, but they're in Northwest D.C., um, so two different options for folks, but I went to As You Are, and uh, they had the game on uh, several TVs up and downstairs. Um, if you were if you were going to watch the Mystics, you were pretty much guaranteed to find a seat that would give you uh, you know a good visual of at least one TV. Um, well, so wait, was, I got to just gotta point out, not just a seat, not yes, just a seat. a seat. That was one of my favorite details in your piece. They have a, a literal TV showing the Mystics games on the dance floor. Yes. So so the building is pretty interesting and not at all what you think of a sports bar. So if I can paint the picture here, it's a two-story building. The bottom floor is a cafe uh, with a bar in the back. You order your food and your drinks at the same bar. There's a TV behind the bar. There's also another TV downstairs in the cafe, and it's relatively quiet at all hours. It's open late mm-hmm. into the evening. So you can, you can get coffee at midnight if you want, um, whatever you want. Um, or you can go upstairs and there's soundproofing so that you don't hear this downstairs, but there is a dance floor upstairs um, that opens early on Mystics game night. It has its own separate bar upstairs as well. Um, and then on the far corner of the wall from the stairwell, the, the far wall from the stairwell rather, um, there are these curtains that can be open or shut. And when the curtains are opened, there is a large TV um, mounted on that wall and they show the Mystics game there as well. So that if you would like to uh, dance to a DJ and also watch the Mystics at the same time, you can do that. I mean, as somebody who hates to dance, that sounds horrific to me, but I know there are people who do love to dance. So I'm excited for them that they get the opportunity to have their dance floor and their WNBA at the same time. Now, as you are, is very much not just a bar partner, which I thought was really interesting, but the inherent concept of it. You had a chance to talk to the founders uh, about it. it. It's it's built and designed to be a different sort of space. Can you just take me through some of the reasoning behind how as you are came to be? Sure. Yeah. So the the co-founders are veterans of the service industry um, and they were looking to create a 
new space and experience for LGBTQIA folks and their allies, a place where anyone can come in as they are and feel welcomed and included. And so inclusivity is, is a really um, pivotal part of their experience. Um, I wrote about this in the story, but you could see it in how they uh, worked really hard to get closed captioning on their TV. They were having some technical difficulties, but on each of their TVs, they were trying to provide closed captioning for the game. Mm -hmm. um, one of the co-founders mentioned to me that they are uh, currently working to translate their menus into Braille um, for folks who are not able to read them. It's just um, thinking of everything. I just love the, the level of detail in this, right? I mean, just from the start uh, to be as inclusive as possible. Yeah, and I actually said uh, to the co-founder that I spoke with, I said, wow, you all have really thought of everything. And she said, no, actually, we, we haven't. That's the thing. Um, but the fact that we're trying and we're starting to think of things means that all these people are coming out of the woodwork, um, giving us ideas for how we can do it even better. And that's how the Braille came to be, actually, or is, is in the process. Someone approached them and said, hey, I can get you your menu in Braille. And they said, heck, yeah. Um, so they're working on that. The, the other um, thing that's in the works and is 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 ongoing is um, they have other events besides the Mystics. I mean, I mean, the Mystics are great enough, but they also have, you know, karaoke and and all these sorts of events. And they will provide um, sign language interpreters at those events. Um, I mean, it's just fantastic. I, I'm I'm so glad that we have people thinking things through in that way. And so, yeah, as you are, uh, check it out, you guys, and check out Jen's incredible story about it. Uh, I, I want to leave our viewers uh, with and our listeners with a little bit about what's coming up for the Mystics, what's next. Uh, but before we do, I want to tell you about Rock Auto. Uh, Rock Auto is just a godsend for people like me. Uh, they are just this ever-increasing number of mates and models. It's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. So why endure often pointless or sometimes intimidating questioning? I, I'm not an auto guy at all, right? While the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand that their warehouse happens to carry. So you go to Rock Auto and you can save 30, 50, even as much as 100% or more from the same parts from a chain or car dealer, probably not more than 100%. I, I wouldn't think so, but um, there's even 100% more. You save some money, right? You definitely do. By going to rockauto.com right now and seeing all the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. So when we think about what is ahead for the Mystics, Jen, a night like this, I'm just curious, what is kind of the biggest thing you're looking for out of tonight? I'm curious to see how the chemistry looks with all 11. Well, he probably won't play 11, but all 11 available. They've, mm. they've looked a tad, particularly on Sunday, a little bit disjointed at times. Coach T said he wasn't super happy with how his rotations looked and his substitution patterns. Mm -hmm. um, they just didn't seem to be in a flow. And kind of Elena Deladon talked with us after the game about this. And she said, we all started kind of missing shots. And then we kind of retreated within ourselves and tried to do it one-on-one -on -one too much. So I'm looking to, to see them get in a better flow. I'm also looking for them to start out better on the defensive end um, against Atlanta on Friday and Chicago on Sunday. They allowed both opponents to shoot really high percentages in the first quarter and, mm -hmm. and even into the second. And so, and there's really, you know, I think it's fair to say that there's no reason for that when you have Natasha Cloud, Ariel Atkins and Alicia Clark um, in your backcourt. Alicia Clark was not available against Chicago, but still you've got, there are hardly any weak links defensively um, on that Mystics team, especially with Elizabeth Williams now being added into the fold. So mm -hmm. um, I think if they can really put the clamps down defensively, that will set the tone for them to, you know, not not trying to be not trying to claw back into it um, after allowing an opponent to not only shoot well, but get the confidence that comes from that. Uh, stats.wnba.com is a really good resource for this. And I really look forward to seeing 
breakdowns by game and by month because with Elizabeth Williams back and Alicia Clark playing more, I think we're going to see, like you said, uh, some real changes in what the DC defense has been like. Uh, now, DC specifically referring to the Mystics, but we want to thank you, obviously, for listening to Locked On Women's Basketball and making us your first listen every day. There is an NBA team that is also in DC. Uh, I mentioned it earlier. The National Basketball Association is where men go to play professional basketball. And you can follow it by listening to Locked on NBA from the first jump ball of the play-in tournament to the last possession of the finals. Locked on experts take you deep inside the playoffs. Now, to be clear, not so much the Wizards, but, you know, playoff teams with insight and analysis affecting all 30 teams. So make sure you're listening to Locked on NBA it's terrific listen as well. Jen Hatfield, I want to thank you for your time as always. I want to remind our listeners, our viewers, make sure you're following Jen Hatfield one on Twitter. Make sure you're following all of our work at the next hoops. Uh, we got great stuff coming the rest of the day and every day because every day we are here for lockdown women's basketball. I am host Howard Magdal. And we will be coming to you tomorrow and right straight through the end of the month. Have yourself a wonderful Tuesday. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs>